Right now I'm on tour in Europe with my band Bent Knee opening for Haken. We're going to be playing lots of shows throughout February and March. And also for four of the shows, my band Ben Levin Group will be subbing for Bent Knee. And I'm very excited about all that stuff. It's happening now in the real world, but in this world of me making the video, which is in the past for you, I'm making beats in my room sometimes when I have time, and it's a lot of fun. And lately I've been messing with a concept, which is to have the music be morphing constantly. So the beat feels like one cohesive beat, but it's constantly changing in some way or another. And through that constant change, you kind of add a level of organic growth and color and gorgeousness to the beat ideally so let's try and create that so I'm gonna start from scratch I've picked my sounds I've got these drums here I picked a kit that has a lot of different sounds because I'm gonna be using a lot of different sounds in this and then the bass sound that kind of thing then we got the pad here. Weird little thing. The flute synth. And then I left a track for mystery stuff. Maybe it'll be singing or a sample or something. I'm just leaving it open for now. But I like to pick my sounds in advance. Uh, it's just a creative limitation as I'm always interested in limitations and Let's just get started here. Now we have a nice little basic beat going and now I'm going to add a little bit of morphing to it. So every little moment won't be a perfect repeat. Each time the beat cycles we're not going to have a perfect repeat. We're going to add little changes. So at this beginning intro I'm going to actually leave it alone. Sparse. Simple. Keeping it. it sounds like Kendrick. This one part is like love and lust. You know, but now we're getting into crazy mode. All right. So I'm going to go through, first of all, I feel like these all might as well be quantized here, these top notes. Um, so now I'm going to go through moment by moment, measure by measure, make sure there's some variation. Degada. I want a degada right there. I want to see if we can go boom something big. I don't know, not into it. That's nice. And then that should start. So when this big hit happens, I want that to be like the trigger that activates. It's sort of like you press the button. Now it's going to happen. Just gonna keep adding little variations, little extra bu bells and whistles. Let's get some triplety 
things happening. Here's what we got so far with all the doodles and poodles. Okay, some moments are a little weak. Like that. I don't like the meh meh. It's not working for me. Everyone's different though. Let's see. See about this whole moment here. like there's just too many of these hi-hats. Let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of them. Put something like this. Alright, I'm creating a cool kind of flam effect here. by taking a 16th note triplet um, and putting a kick drum on a 16th note triplet right after the downbeat. Same for the snare. So we've got this kind of let's have that lead to a big ding. Nice. I think we made a good improvement there. So it's like. Okay, so that's a good beat for now. Lots of morphing, lots of change, which is what we're going for here. And I'm going to try fleshing it out with other instruments, and we'll probably still make more changes to the uh, drums later. But let's see what we can do with uh, some bass. Actually, maybe some pad first. There's some bass, there's some pad. I really like that moment. So I'm gonna have that be where the synth enters to accentuate it, or where the pad enters. Maybe that's where the heavy bass will start right here 
So we'll mute this bass. That's nice and dramatic. That's cool. All right, let's get this flute synth happening. I'm not really feeling that sound after all, so I'm just gonna switch to a different one. I think that's a good melody. I think it has potential. Let's dig in. I think the impact right here that feels like the crux of this. That's like the the part that's working. So I'm going to lean into that more. I want my decisions to be built around that moment. How can I take what's already great about it and maximize it so that the whole piece is as good as that spot. So I'm going to have the drums that come in before that moment be totally dead. I'm just going to cut the high frequencies out of them. And I'm going to bring the high frequencies in at that spot. Let's automate this. So I definitely want them to be dead by this point. And I think I'm going to lead into that moment with the drums being perfectly normal, perfectly bright, and getting darker and darker into that moment. And then suddenly extremely bright right when that swell happens so fully bright getting darker almost there. I think we're losing something by having it stay dark for that long. So I'm going to cut this down and make this little build. Cool. That seems like a good spot for something else to go on top of it. So now it's time for my question mark box to take place. I think I'm going to do a vocal sample. Okay, yeah, I'll take something from one of my demos. Let's mangle that. Right there. Something should happen right there. All right, let's see how this works out. Oh, yeah. Cool, cool makes you not really need this note. Beautiful. So we'll put that here where the question mark is. And I'm going to put some reverb on that. I'm going to automate the dry and wet. So let's get a nice plate reverb. 
get real wet right before the entrance and then it's going to cut out. So that's probably too wet because the sample's already cool. We don't want to hide it behind a wall of reverb. That'll make it sound a little more generic. Cool. So that's what the cut sounds like. Let's hear it all together. Right here, I want the sample back. This time up an octave. So I'm shifting it up an octave. There is an octave. It's a little harsh. All right, so the drums changed a lot. The bass is already doing quite a bit, maybe too much. The pad's cool, the way it enters and stays in, I'm happy with that. The melody itself, though, is pretty static. If I'm gonna rap over this or if I'm gonna sing over it, then it's fine if it's static, but I think I wanna see if I can get it to hold its own before I go into throwing vocals on this. So. I'm going to work on making this melody sort of evolve in some ways. Um, and I think the way I'm going to go about that is with some tremolator. Now what tremolator does is it just cuts the signal out and brings it back again. So if I were to go, uh, 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 I'm cutting my voice out and bringing it back in it. Again, this does that to whatever it's on in a rhythmic fashion. Cuts it out. That's with it on. That's without it on. So I think if I take really fast one, see if it can get even faster. And then I play around with how much of that there is, how much depth there is to that, um, meaning how much it cuts out. I can vary some of these notes up. So I can start out clean with no tremolator and then have it become uh, more affected as the note progresses. And then at this point here, I want to double the melody with a different sound. Okay, I found another moment I want to emphasize, which is the triplet kicks. Da, 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 da. So I want to cut everything out for that. I'm going to put all of these tracks except the drums into a folder and this is going to be called Tremolator Stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Tremolator, which is that same effect we were using before to cut things out rhythmically, I'm going to put that on everything during the, the triplet kicks. So that'll make it so that the kicks kind of stand on their own. Everything else is tremolated during that moment. Nice. Cool. And now I want to stick that landing a little more. So I'm going to put a explosion sound on my drums right there. Yeah. yeah, that helps. Okay. Almost there. There could be a little more change still. I want to hear more change in the space on some of these drum hits. So I'm actually going to duplicate the drums here. I'm going to look for the guy that goes, uh! uh! 
Now I get to make this uh reverberant. Put them to the side on that hit and put them in the middle on this hit. Get things moving around a little more in the stereo field. To really make a big change here at the end, I'm going to switch the texture drastically at this point. Dun, 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 dun. Phew! <laughs>